Okay, everybody, this is your teacher, Connie. I know you haven't heard my voice much, but um, I am with Paula at Blue Play Cafe. Paula, what's your last name? Camerata. Paula Camerata. Are you one of the owners here then? I am one of the owners at right. Blue Play Cafe. All right, are there other owners? Yes, or? I have a friend, uh, Doug King. He's my partner. Okay. And my owner, or partner yes. in business. Partner in yes. business. <laughs> um, one of the units that we have um, in my entrepreneurial management class is figuring out, okay, do you want this to be a sole proprietorship or um, a partnership or an LLC? What did you guys decide on and We why? decided on LLC. Um, we decided on that because um, we're not married, we're just friends coming together doing a business, and LLC is, um, works better with... Um, if you get sued yes. or anything like that, it comes to your company and not your personal exactly. in, entitlement. So. Yep. So in case, on um, you know, if the business ever did have trouble, um, your your people that you happen to owe money to couldn't come and take your house or anything like that. Right. And that's because you're decided. protected by the limited yep. liability corporation. Yep. Excellent. Um, just give us a little rundown. I did take some footage, you know, showing where you have. You serve the drinks over here and some sandwiches and things like that. Tell us about your products that you have. Yep, so you come into the cafe, my employees greet you with a smile on their face. We um, have a complete um, coffee bar, mochas, lattes. Um, we get our coffee from Boom and it's in Watoma, mm. um, Wisconsin. It's only here and uh, Mission Coffee House in Plover is where we get our um, to sell our same coffee. So we do um, smoothies. And we have wraps. We have. Uh, we wanted to go more healthy instead of um, fry food. No chicken nuggets. Nothing like that. No hamburgers. No fries. We wanted to do a healthy version. So we do wraps. Um, we have a variety of tortillas to put the wraps on. And then we do have do. Um, we have. We do have popcorn. And we just recently started doing um, pizza. Okay. So we have seven ten-inch pizzas. Um, sodas we have, and we have our baked goods from. Um, JJ's Bakery in Marshfield. They deliver okay. it to me once a week. All right. So those are your products, but you mm -hmm. also offer a service here, and it's geared toward families. As I we understand. do, we do. We have um, a play, big play place in the way back. Um, our mission was to um, help the community to be more um, family oriented, to do things with their kids, and a lot of things in Wisconsin Rapids aren't for kids. So we wanted to. Um, have the kids have fun and have a good time with family. So we have, um, it's like 4,000 square feet back there at the play place. We do birthday parties back there. We have a big floor on the, a big play um, ground on the floor where you play games. It's like soccer, football, hockey, and you just use your foot to play games with it. It's called I Play, and that's been a big, um, big hit back there. Okay. And so how did you figure out what to charge for when families come? Is it by the hour? Is it by the number of kids they have? Or um, That was a big hard thing to do because my husband wanted me to charge by the hour, which it was hard because I'm like, I'm not going to kick some kid out in an hour and say, oh, your time's up. So we decided to do daily charges. So from four years and up is $8. And then um, 24 to 47 months is $5 because we feel like 23 months and under there's not much for them to do really, so mm -hmm. they're free. We just want their parents to maybe buy a coffee drink or something to support us, but they are free. So. Sure. So, and when you say a full day, is that like an eight hour thing if they wanted to stay here that long? Yep, it's all day. So they can come in for two hours and then leave. We give them wristbands and they can come back during the same day with the same wristband and we're, until we close. Excellent. So some families do do that. They come in the morning, go home, take a nap or what so, and then just come back. Did you, when you started out, um, did you have an idea of what would be popular as far as, you know, the play area or as far as your food and drinks? Did you do some market research or not so much? Um, we did. My um, daughter has, we used to live in Colorado and she went to a play place with a coffee. So we researched there and then we just researched on the internet about what kind of play place we wanted, uh, what we wanted back there. And the food, like I said, we wanted to be healthy. And there's not really a many wrap places around here, so we thought we would just do wraps. Okay. And how long have you been in business? Um, it'll be two years in October, so okay. not a very, very, very short time. Um, Doug and I just met two and a half years ago, just as friends, and we just started. He has, he had a plan. I had a plan. I was our passion to work with families, same passion, and um, here we are. So. 
Um, the other times I've been in here, it's been quite bustling and with families and all kinds of customers and everything. Today it's a little more quiet. Um, do you have, a, is, it, is it pretty steady, but are there really busy times too? Um, a lot of times on Saturdays are busiest days, but it's so weird because we don't really have a day where it's busy, where it's all fluctuates. Um, like yesterday, we were pretty busy, and now today, this morning, been we were busy, and then now it's not. So it just yeah. it just depends. It varies. Yeah. When you are staffing and you know choosing how many people to have for any given day, how do you figure that out? We really don't. We just, um, I'm an opener. Doug and I, we, um, I open all the time. He usually um, works in the afternoon shift. So it's usually him and I, and then I always have one more person. So, and then in the nighttime, we have um, teenagers that work, so they close for us from the high school. Okay. Um, I've noticed when I've been here before, your customer service is excellent. Um, and each time I've come in, you know, like what you said before, there's someone to greet me with a smile and take my order right away. And even when it's been super, super busy and they've been rushed behind the counter, I've noticed they've kept their cool and it's, I've been really impressed by your customer service here. So when you hire someone, are you looking for a certain thing in their personality that you think will work well? Or do you just concentrate on training someone so that they are showing the customer service skills you want them to show? You know, to be honest, um, I do both. Um, but I want them, to, I train, we train them what we want. Um, I know how when I go to a place, I don't want to be doted on, but I want, I want to smile and I want to be like, I am something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been to Chick-fil-A, but I like the way they handle things and they, their customer service is amazing as well. Mm -hmm. So I just think, um, I want you to come back. And if you have bad customer service, you're probably not gonna come back and you're gonna tell 10 people. Yeah. And then I'm not gonna have business. Right. So. Do you have like a formal way of getting feedback from customers or do you just listen to what they're telling you? Word of mouth, what they're telling us. Um, sometimes po people post on Facebook or usually, um, usually the pretty are pretty upfront and they'll tell us, you know, about our employee, what happened and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But um, my young employees, they're just amazing. They just know. They do a great job. Yeah. I'm very blessed. I, I would agree with that. Um, why did you choose Wisconsin Rapids to open a business, and specifically why the Shopco Plaza? Okay, um, I, I'm originally from Utah. I've been here for 19 years, and um, Doug's from Arizona. He's been here for, I think, about the same time. We just live here, and um, Doug went to a um, summit at the church over here, and one of the meetings was doing a gap in your community, doing something for your community to make it better and make it good for families and stuff. So Doug remembered that in his little, in his brain. So he's like, you know, I gotta do something for my community where I live in. And um, that's why we did. And it was really tough to find, to find a location because we wanted to drive through so bad. Because coffee shops drive through, people don't wanna get out of their car. Mm -hmm. And we just couldn't find one. And we were gonna do the old um, bagel place across the, what, the west side. Mm -hmm. But that just didn't work out for us. And um, this one just came in. It just was perfect. What we needed, the right size. Um, we did have a drive through. We do have one now, but we just, it just worked out for us. Excellent. So. Um, one of the things we talk about in both of my classes is, you know, why do you start a business? Is it to make money or is it to help the community? And I'm hearing from you that it maybe wasn't so much to make money, but more to create meaning in your community and uh, to have a place here? Am I on the right That track? is exactly what it was why. Money is just money, and I know we all need money to live, but to me, the reward is having a kid come in smiling and saying, that's the play place, or I've been there, or making families happy and feel comfortable. That's mine. The money will come somehow. So. Right, right. And Doug feels the same way, so. Um, speaking of the partnership, have there been any big disagreements and how have you handled that? I know we talk about that a lot in, in our entrepreneurial management class because some businesses do form partnerships and then it doesn't work out. So how have you been managing that? You know, Doug and I, I just, we have a new employee and I was just talking to her about that. Doug and I are, t are two totally different, the way we do things are totally different, but um, I like, we complement each other. Um, I do something my way he does it his way and we really haven't had a lot of disagreements where we are frustrated with each other 
Um, I've just learned that we're partners and he can do what he wants, you know, run right. what he wants to do and I'll do mine. And it just seems to work. Just the complement of each other seems to work. Um, when we, sometimes our spouses give us other ideas and we have to keep reminding them that it's our business and right. we're going to do what we're going to, yeah, so. Sure. Um, now, this is a private company, so you don't need to disclose any financial information, but I know my students are going to wonder, okay, how did you get the money to open your business? Because that's always the biggest hurdle for everybody. Yes, yes. And so we met, we started trying to do this thing in February, and we opened in October. So from February on, I didn't know what I was gonna, what we were gonna do because money is a big thing, and the plate it was very important. And I just went to a bank, and it was all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna have to put my faith in there because it was all God. Um, every loan I got, I applied for, I got. Every loan, every loan, every loan. And that was telling me that God wanted me to this place here. And um, so I'm paying off my loans, but it's okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> did you have a formal business plan or not so much? We did have a business plan, okay. yes. And yeah. did you have help in creating that? or? Um, no, Doug just did it on his own. 